بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم In the name of God the compassionate the merciful Hello everybody and uh, thank you very much for attending in this webinar we are waiting for some friends that uh, we have invited before to be here but uh, I think there is or there are some uh, misarrangement with them but they will come as I knew uh, thank you very much. First of all, let me say the my warmest thank and gratitude to uh, Professor uh, Dr. Bekzadeh that uh, is going to have his webinar in this uh, session. And then I'd like to say my thanks to him because of accepting your invitation to have this webinar for us. And uh, the, uh, secondly, I want to say my thanks to ECHO-SF, the ECHO-Science uh, ECHO Foundation that are uh, participating in this uh, international webinar for us. Uh, let me tell something about uh, dear Professor Begzadeh. Um, he is uh, uh, an AI professional with three years, 30 years background and in academia, R&D, and centers and industry. I think uh, this webinar with uh, such a, uh, let's say, professional uh, webinar, man, let's say, and professional AI, uh, um, let's say, uh, a professional man, a professional man in this regard, could be a very good uh, kind of webinar for us uh, especially uh, there is, is um, a new thing for us because if we do not have any uh, thank you very much uh, Professor uh, Kayevi is uh, attending to this webinar I'd like to say my warmest welcome to Professor Kayevi the uh, president of ECHO-SF uh, that uh, the, made us uh, easy and facilitate this for us thank you very much Professor Kayevi and uh, here we have this webinar with the, let's say, some uh, outline application of AI in rehabilitation. It's a new uh, when point of view in this regard. And we do not have, uh, I didn't see anything about the usage of uh, AI in rehabilitation sciences like physiotherapy, cognition, and the other things. And this is a, a, that I think it is first in our country, I didn't see. Maybe Dr. Big they have some this in other places, but we do not know. And impact of AI uh, on rehabilitation, education, case studies, and success stories of uh, AI in rehabilitation, and the other things that is going to be said by our professor, Dr. Reza Big uh, Again, I, I'd like to say my thanks to Dr. Begzadeh to accepting our invitation and uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Tayyebi from EQSF and the other colleagues that are attending in this webinar. Uh, dear Dr. Begzadeh, the floor is yours and then uh, we are going to listen um, to your, uh, let's say, speech and lecture here and hopefully we could have the other colleagues uh, in this regard, in this webinar more and more. Thank you very much. The floor is yours. Yeah, uh, good morning to all of you. And uh, in the name of God, I would like to uh, would share my please, uh, Come closer, excuse me. Would you please come closer because your voice is not so clear and okay. low. Right. No, no. Okay. Is, it, is it okay? Is it okay now? Is, from is it your better? mic, yes. I think it's better. I think yeah. it's better. So I, I try you. to. Okay. Uh, I hope uh, everything is uh, going well in your uh, university uh, in terms of uh, progressing towards, uh, uh, in fact, your, your plan and uh, vision. Uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ahmadi, and uh, all of you for attending this present and inviting me and attending this event. And I briefly explain uh, the uh, role of artificial intelligence and generative AI in rehabilitation as uh, tools for transforming rehabilitation, not only in practice, but also in education. 
So uh, although this uh, uh, area is very wide and uh, in fact very deep, uh, but I try to put it uh, in a very short presentation, uh, which is almost about 15, uh, uh, 45 minutes and 15 minutes for Q&A. So uh, I hope I can give you a very brief picture about how uh, AI and generative AI are going to support rehabilitation and change it to the next level. So uh, if I want to uh, just briefly uh, introduce myself, I can, uh, in fact, uh, summarize my 35 years of experience uh, in three categories, uh, almost uh, each category of activities I had or uh, working experience I had was in academia, uh, Tehran University, Rashid Bereshi University, uh, Iran, uh, also in Malaysia, in MME, uh, Malay University, uh, University of Malaya, and also Nottingham University, and also Research Center, Iran Telecommunication Research Center in Iran, uh, which I was uh, heading the research center uh, as the deputy for research, and uh, also in uh, MOSTI, which was National Research Center in Malaysia. And uh, in industry also recently, because I realized that my experience uh, is very uh, useful for industry. So I started to train people, train enterprises, and also consulting them, particularly after the uh, birth of ChatGPT. Uh, now the demand is very wide and very deep uh, to use uh, these tools uh, for their business. Anyway, today I'm going to uh, somehow uh, uh, go for a very brief introduction to artificial intelligence and generative AI, and then application of them in rehabilitation. And uh, then we I go and talk about, uh, at the same time, talk about case studies uh, in this field and the impact of uh, AI and generative AI on rehabilitation education. So I consider both sides, not only uh, treatment, uh, and but also the education of uh, uh, this uh, sector. So if I want to go for uh, introduction to AI and generative AI, key concept I can share with you this slide. If you uh, just look at this uh, slide, you can see that artificial intelligence is uh, some sort of uh, multidisciplinary uh, science uh, supported by various, uh, in fact, uh, uh, science, uh, scientific discipline, computer science, psychology, neuroscience, biology, math, sociology, philosophy, and this is my favorite part. And uh, of course, there are so many engineering tools uh, uh, like cloud computing, machine learning algorithm, databases, and so on, data visualization, and so on. So it's a very complicated. Uh, field, uh, if I want to say, uh, in terms of uh, general aspect of artificial intelligence. So if uh, you, you are going to understand it, we have to go for uh, very fundamental uh, training and uh, learning process in order to understand the nature and the uh, wider scope of artificial intelligence. But anyway, nowadays we can we can in fact uh, go to uh, a little bit more uh, very basic concept this day. I mean, in this session, we define it uh, as uh, some sort of simulation of human intelligence, although the clear definition of intelligence is not uh, very uh, well known. And anyone with different background define intelligence in their own term, mathematicians, psychologists, and cognitive scientists, they have their own definition. There is no specific definition. But anyway, the main purpose is to mimic the human behavior in terms of learning, planning, and uh, understanding, and uh, uh, speech understanding, and also image understanding. So we have three levels of uh, AI, which is shallow AI, general AI, and also super AI, which uh, most of the things that you see in the market 
available and everybody call it AI is shadow AI, which are mostly dumb algorithm for doing some uh, activities similar to what we are doing. Actually, we nobody knows how the brain is working, but they try to mathematically model the story in terms of, uh, in fact, uh, mimicking the human behavior in one way or another. So in the shadow AI, we have uh, basic, uh, uh, in fact, subfield uh, that are uh, listed in this image and machine learning, uh, which is the, uh, I mean, basically learning from data and uh, model the, uh, in fact, uh, uh, generating a model based on the data and also natural language processing in order to understand the uh, human uh, natural language and uh, convert it into internal representation for uh, receiving the meaning somehow, not exact meaning, but also generating text. And also computer vision dealing with uh, not only object oriented object uh, detection and uh, so many other segmentations uh, processing which are mostly engineering part uh, computer vision is a uh, in fact area that we are going to understand the components uh, in the image and uh, of course the uh, artificial neural network is another field all the engineers uh, know this uh, technique in order to control the system at the area stage and then uh, grow to different fields uh, in terms of application and also robotic, everybody heard about robotic and so on. So these are the general, uh, I mean, soft field of artificial intelligence. Of course, there are uh, other aspects like planning and so on, so uh, we are not going to cover it. So based on these technologies that I mentioned to you, we have uh, many, many applications that uh, AI, uh, would be able to, uh, in fact, improve them, enhance them, enrich them in various fields from finance, gaming, astronomy, transportation, agriculture, education. All uh, sectors are getting benefit from uh, these tools, and nowadays even philosophy is <laughs> getting benefit out of uh, this uh, uh, technology. And uh, now we are going to of course, narrow down into the medical or healthcare domain. And if, uh, if we want to shift, I mean, uh, uh, deep dive into uh, application in, in health, AI in health, uh, we can categorize them uh, in this uh, image. So uh, in fact, we can uh, do the uh, disease the diagnosis and treatment. Uh, I did a few projects on this one for HFMD, for uh, a few others, for breast cancer and so on. Uh, visual, uh, I mean, virtual nursing assistant, fraud detection, cybersecurity, uh, gene uh, editing for the, um, for the genetic engineering. There are so many applications of AI and uh, robotic to help uh, rehabilitation and drug development. Drug development now is uh, getting benefit uh, out of this technology and many uh, recent uh, drugs are being uh, designed uh, based on artificial intelligence uh, application and medical diagnosis and so on. So as you can see, the, in various the area of uh, uh, healthcare, actually AI is uh, moving forward and enhancing the power of uh, uh, healthcare. So, but the major challenge in utilizing AI, which always uh, nobody uh, highlights at the early stage, is uh, the concept of uh, data, where we are going to get data, how data uh, is going to be collected and uh, uh, used in fact and uh, maintain and govern and so on. There are so many aspects of the concept of AI and we have to make sure that the data that we have is valuable and useful and reliable and related. And also the next one, uh, next aspect is trust, which uh, we must be able to trust the result of AI. As I mentioned to you, the algorithm exists in uh, this field now, available in the market and different on this under different names and platforms. Uh, these are not uh, intelligent algorithm. We are doing 
system algorithm, which is uh, we call it DOM algorithm. And, uh, but if the designers uh, use right data and right, uh, uh, in fact, uh, method of learning and uh, algorithm and approach, then the result is reliable. So we must be able to trust the result. We cannot, particularly in medical domain, we cannot uh, trust easily. We have to check everything to make sure that the outcome of uh, any intelligence system, particularly for medical domain, is correct. That is very important and also accurate. And then uh, uh, ethnic issues, you know, readiness issues, these are the other terms that we have to consider if we want to integrate AI in education or rehabilitation or any other domain. These are very fundamental uh, challenges that anyone uh, should face and deal with it. The benefit that we can consider uh, out of uh, this uh, uh, application is very important. Uh, we can use the, this technique in order to enhance uh, patient care, offering accurate information, improve healthcare experience, time saving, cost saving, and uh, reducing the stress for so many activities that machine can do it very rapidly and uh, improve the diagnosis. So uh, one of the systems I was working for, uh, it was for uh, cardiovascular uh, analytics uh, based on the rule-based system and semantic technology. And I was in, uh, in fact, um, Malaysian uh, National uh, Research Center. So uh, at that time, 2009, it was very advanced at that time. So it was very useful and very, uh, in fact, uh, beneficial for many applications. And if I want to summarize the relationship between generative AI and AI, at the left, you can see that the AI is the big field. Machine, uh, machine learning is part of AI. Deep learning is part of machine learning. Natural language processing is another subfield of AI, which uh, also uh, uh, related to machine learning and uh, deep learning. And through the integration of this technique or major soft field of artificial intelligence, actually, as you can see at the uh, right side, the position of the artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, and generative AI, uh, uh, up down to, in fact, chat GPT, you can see every part is sub part of other. So when we discuss about chat GPT means all aspects, all technologies, all algorithms, all systems in the field of artificial intelligence can be used uh, in uh, chat GPT, as I will explain a little bit more later. So, if I want to briefly, uh, I mean, define generative AI, I don't know how uh, definitely you use uh, uh, chat GPT and so on, but there are so many technologies behind uh, this, uh, I mean, very advanced system. Uh, actually, the system is going to uh, use the different type of technique, as I mentioned, uh, machine learning, natural language processing, deep learning, and other algorithms like uh, generative uh, adversarial network, or GAN, and uh, VAE, and transformer, and large language model, a combination of all these technologies, which are very uh, advanced, uh, the combination and integration of these uh, com uh, technologies, in fact, lead us to uh, de developing very large uh, language model, which uh, was the uh, core bottleneck of any AI system. And uh, these- hey, uh, Do you share your slide or not? You didn't share your slide here? Yeah? Okay, because some uh, slides, do you have share any slides with us or not? Yeah, uh, yes, I will do it. Not yet. Okay, okay. Thanks. Because, uh, yeah, because I, I may do it later. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, in fact, uh, uh, this model, as a matter of fact, there are uh, different models of chat GPT, use different models, but dif uh, use different models, uh, and uh, other uh, service provider using different type of models. So, uh, these models are, uh, in terms of uh, uh, 
techniques are different, but the concept is a generative pre-trained, I mean, uh, pre-trained transformer. So uh, these three components combined together in 2014-15 and then in nine, 2019, uh, the first uh, GPT came to the uh, picture and uh, 2020 and 2022 finally reached to generative uh, AI. Uh, anyway, what this system can uh, can do, uh, actually they can generate and classify information, summarize it, translate it, do, uh, conducting research, uh, edit the content, edit the programming, uh, I mean, code, and also image generation. There are so many uh, applications uh, supported by uh, these techniques. And nowadays, every day, uh, at least I can say every day, at least 10 new systems come to the market. And uh, amazingly, uh, this area of uh, AI grew dramatically, and you can find applications of AI, generative AI, in um, almost every single domain. And uh, that's because now uh, everybody can use, uh, uh, through API, can use all the models generated by ChatGPT or any other uh, generative AI to API and use the model that they have. And uh, before this, generating this model, very uh, the expensive filming, and uh, because nobody had uh, access to wide uh, volume of data. But anyway, if we want to uh, move forward, generative AI, actually, as you know, we can uh, write prompt and ask any question from the system uh, that uh, this system uh, based on the large language model, can have access to uh, pre-trained models and then um, collect uh, all the answers and uh, generate text based on the answer that they have through the model. So writing this prompt is very important and it totally depends on the, uh, the internal structure of the uh, GPT used in that particular uh, system. And uh, uh, anyone can use it for the time being, but are you, I mean, when I conduct training on uh, prompt engineering, I say anyone can write any text, but professional writer or poet, they, they write it more efficiently and get better results. So it's some sort of art how to write prompt at the earlier stage is uh, engineering method, and then later on uh, convert it to some sort of art, how to write your prompt to get the best result based on the uh, behind that one. So the, there are so many uh, methods for, uh, in fact, prompt engineering, as you can see at the bottom right of the slide. And uh, there are so many, and every day we, uh, we see a new technique to improve and enhance uh, the method of writing from. And this is another area that I believe uh, anyone should uh, be an expert. So uh, based on this uh, introduction, uh, we can go for uh, introducing uh, some uh, subfield of uh, application of genetic AI uh, use cases uh, in healthcare. So we have uh, drug discovery, disease diagnosis, medical chatbot and patient care and medical simulation. So these are the area that, uh, of course, under this area, we have so many other uh, use cases and so many other projects. So, but this one shows that generative AI now is uh, very popular, uh, particularly in the healthcare industry. So, um. Dr. Bakes are there. Sorry to interrupt. We can't yeah. see your slides. Oh. So from the beginning? Or... No, from the beginning, we couldn't see any of the slides. We tried to reach a bit. Oh, what? When we, when we, uh, when we start? Oh, yeah. really? Yeah, we, we... Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So, but, but it was confirmed that... Uh... Yeah, I could see your slides at the very beginning when we tested it, but... Here we go. Now we can see. There oh, we go. Now? 
Yes, we have your slides now. Thank you very much. Oh, oh my God, you have it? Why are you no. doing it <laughs> Well, we tried to tell you, but <laughs> sorry about that. Oh, anyway, thank no you problem. for fixing it. All right, so uh, sorry about that. It's so okay, I, go, I go a little bit, uh, just uh, uh, explain this. Did but you, if you did, can recap you didn't, some you parts. Didn't see anything, right? You didn't see we anything. didn't see anything, no. Oh no. my God. <laughs> oh my God. So, <laughs> it is. Now, now you can see, right? We can see everything now. Thank you very much. All right. So uh, this is the multidisciplinary, uh, I mean, uh, uh, field of uh, AI, as I mentioned, in terms of science, in terms of, uh, uh, in fact, uh, technology and engineering, uh, as I mentioned. And uh, then I try to uh, define the top field of uh, narrow AI, which is uh, machine learning, neural, uh, natural language processing, artificial neural network, and robotic, and uh, in fact, computer vision. And uh, I highlighted uh, all the applications uh, that, uh, of course, uh, much more than this one, these are the, uh, I mean, uh, different categories. And one of them, of course, is the medical domain. So I try to uh, elaborate a little bit uh, into uh, application of artificial intelligence in uh, medical domain. So you can see in this picture, there are so many uh, areas that, again, AI can be applied and uh, definitely more than this. And I've seen so many applications in various uh, domains in healthcare, even mental healthcare. And uh, as I highlighted, uh, these are the challenge, uh, the data, trust, uh, uh, ethnic issue, and readiness, uh, expertise that you need, uh, how you are going to sell your uh, ideas, your systems, and use it, and uh, uh, regularity and strategy, because the, uh, use, uh, the use of data and access to the data is very important, uh, scalability, evaluation. These are the big challenge in AI, uh, uh, use data utilization. And uh, <clears throat> of course, when uh, we do the, uh, uh, in fact, uh, we apply artificial intelligence in healthcare, we have to, we get a lot of benefit, like, uh, I mean, reducing costs, improving the performance and uh, saving time and enhance the, uh, uh, in fact, uh, patient care and many other applications. And also we would be able to uh, predict uh, so many diseases. So I, uh, the late, uh, latest project I worked on, it was on uh, prediction of the HFMD outbreak. Uh, and uh, it was very uh, successful at that time using fuzzy system. And uh, then I tried to, uh, in fact, uh, give some idea about the position of uh, uh, AI soft field like machine learning and deep learning and natural language processing in the field of AI. And then I show the uh, relationship between artificial intelligence and the machine learning, deep learning, generative AI, and also chat GPT. So these are the uh, typical uh, categorization and relationship between all these uh, techniques. And uh, generative AI, I try to define it. Uh, there are uh, I mean, uh, generative AI is a combination of various techniques and theories behind it. So from large language model to generative, I mean, GAN and RAND, these are the techniques for learning and transform it in order to generate text uh, in uh, human uh, language form. And uh, of course, uh, large language model is a very uh, big uh, uh, breakthrough in providing this service for public and everyone can use ChatGPT now or any other generative AI technique uh, based on very uh, simple query. Uh, in the past, uh, uh, everyone had to use SQL or any other uh, query languages in order to communicate with the data. Now, uh, natural by typing natural language sentences, uh, you, you would be able to have access data to the, any sort of data. And that is a very uh, big uh, jump or leap in the field of artificial intelligence. There are so many applications, there are so many features uh, that uh, Generative AI provided in terms of image, text, video, and uh, 
uh, dealing with uh, uh, coding and so on. So uh, this tool now is uh, helping anyone uh, in any domain, any sector, and at any level uh, to uh, do their job, even including the writing emails and so on. And uh, uh, to use these techniques or uh, this, uh, uh, in fact, service, uh, you need to write prompt, but writing prompt is uh, should be very professional. Of course, whatever you write, uh, you get some result, but if you write it professionally, definitely you get a much better, deeper, and uh, uh, valuable uh, and correct uh, data from the existing model. So, uh, the, as I mentioned to you, generative AI now is uh, uh, applied in, in many domains, in the, in fact, the healthcare industry, as I mentioned. And uh, if I want to uh, go to the uh, classes and the group of uh, benefits of the uh, usage of AI, generative AI is, uh, in fact, uh, uh, enhancing the efficiency and cost uh, reduction, improve accuracy and precision, support the medical education and training. These are the three fundamental benefits of using uh, generative AI. So, uh, and I believe uh, now, particularly uh, your organization, your university should consider uh, these three benefits and use the generative AI and artificial intelligence in various uh, dimension of uh, your activities. At the top of this one, for management, for decision making, uh, for marketing, for uh, various uh, services that you are going to uh, use in, in HR, uh, you, you can use generative AI uh, in very efficient way. But anyway, uh, these are the uh, important uh, challenges that uh, you must uh, consider, be, uh, apart from the one that I mentioned to you related to data and trust level and the way you're handling or using or utilizing AI techniques. In generative AI, uh, because uh, uh, in fact, uh, we cannot interpret the result and the system actually does the whole uh, job. We have to always be very careful to uh, double check the results generated by machine learning, uh, by uh, generative AI, and you need large uh, data set if you are going to have your own chat GPT, and of course there are uh, existing models for particular uh, domain for this, but not all of them. Sometimes the data that already uh, used by uh, chat GPT or any other generative AI are biased, so you have to adjust yourself or fine tune it. And uh, uh, we need to have uh, transparency in our, uh, in fact, usage or utilization. Uh, this transparency, of course, has uh, different dimension how to do it. And ethical consideration also is very important because uh, the system is done. They don't have any uh, understanding about moral issues and so on. Of course, they put some uh, filters uh, in order to uh, cover some of the uh, data, uh, I mean, uh, against the very basic uh, uh, moral issues, like uh, if we say uh, how to kill someone or how to make, uh, I mean, uh, fire or bomb or something, the system never answer you. Even if you ask uh, about somebody, I mean, they don't provide uh, personal information, although the system can provide this one. But anyway, if we want to uh, move forward and see what are the applications of uh, uh, AI in uh, or generative AI in rehabilitation, which is the focus of our uh, discussion. Sorry about the slide. So I, but anyway, we have time. I can, if you have time, I can continue uh, a little bit longer. Uh, so uh, in rehabilitation, of course, we have various type of rehabilitation, you know, physical, neurological, mental, and speech, uh, visual, or hearing, and so on. So the main idea, of course, you know better than me, that we are going to restore everything and repair everything and uh, figure out how to deal with the, uh, re uh, to how to rehab the uh, patient. And these are very uh, uh, important issues and 
you have to be very careful. And in, in the past, human doctors, human nurses actually were uh, trying to do this job. But now AI and generative AI are capable to of uh, handling at least uh, and uh, handling the issue and at least assisting uh, doctors and nurses and all the rehab team in the different ways. So how the system is doing this for, uh, to, uh, to uh, support this, uh, in fact, uh, uh, activities in rehabilitation. In fact, for uh, uh, motor recovery, we have uh, sensors to collect data from a, person, a patient, and we, have, we can model it, we can personalize this model for individual, and uh, we can uh, collect data and teleport it to some other places so other people can monitor the data from distance. And we can have a robotic assistant in order to guide the patient in a different way how to, uh, in fact, move and uh, uh, control the uh, rehabilitation and neuron signals uh, based on the input data. And also virtual reality can help them to understand the situation and provide awareness uh, based on the uh, sensors and feedback they get from the sensors uh, from the body and position of the body. So uh, based on this, uh, we have a little bit more specific example of uh, physical rehabilitation. Uh, for instance, we have uh, particular robots that uh, they uh, co uh, connect your body with the sensors and uh, if you have some problem with your leg, then the position of your leg, the movement, everything is being monitored by the, uh, in fact, uh, this robot. And uh, the system can control and guide your movement rather than a physician, uh, in fact, expert for rehabilitation doing that one. Or you can monitor visually the, the movement of the body uh, and then uh, analyze it and identify where is the problem, for instance, the way you walk or uh, the way, uh, in fact, uh, you stand and uh, sit or uh, sleep. So the position of your bones and joints uh, will uh, tell the uh, medical doctor that, okay, where, where is the problem? And uh, another area is uh, for uh, stroke rehabilitation, actually, uh, we can connect sensors <coughs> to the patient and, uh, for instance, from the camera, uh, identify their face, their gesture, the, uh, uh, the movement of the body or face or head and foot, and also uh, extract the feature and analyze it and uh, figure out what is the problem, which part of the body has uh, impact uh, based on the stroke they, they had. And uh, uh, we have cognitive rehabilitation and using AI, we can scan the body, the brain, and also get the signal of the, in fact, uh, activities of the brain. And uh, in fact, feed this data into the system and identify, uh, compare it with the uh, healthy brain, healthy body, healthy uh, in fact, uh, activities or signal in the body. And uh, based on that one, we can generate some sort of visual, uh, I mean, uh, image in order to guide the patient how to do it. We can uh, send signal to the robot uh, that they have uh, uh, work and uh, control their body. And also we can uh, control their muscles. So these are the methods of uh, uh, some techniques in order to uh, apply AI in cognitive rehabilitation. For a speech, uh, uh, in fact, rehabilitation, we have a different uh, approach uh, in order to, first, there are some app, they, they collect the voice and identify uh, what, where is the problem, if they cannot pronounce certain words, if they cannot use the, uh, I mean, cavity and tongue, and then the system generate and simulate uh, this uh, information and identify where is the problem. 
And also the way they communicate or the way they talk, the system can understand the language and uh, correct it and try to provide training to uh, the patient. Uh, and uh, another one, of course, as I mentioned, uh, there are so many case studies uh, in particular in different languages uh, and because the, in different culture, in different languages, the way people talk, the way people, uh, in fact, uh, pronounce words and so on, uh, is very important how to train them. So we can define uh, a certain case studies to train AI system in order to handle uh, in fact, uh, people in different areas and different languages and ages and so on, and with different accents. Even. And another area for uh, generative AI application is personalization uh, for uh, the rehabilitation program. So as we know, usually the, uh, the nurse or the, the expert uh, uh, doctors in this field uh, should monitor the patient behavior or walking or whatever, and then they have to uh, come up with certain, uh, in fact, uh, process or activities uh, for them, that particular patient individually. But we can leave it to uh, uh, intelligence system in order to design it automatically for individuals. So only uh, uh, the only task that uh, is left to the uh, expert is to monitor this uh, uh, the correctness of this uh, automatic generated program and uh, uh, this system also can uh, with the patient uh, in a very humanistic uh, approach so that they can communicate with them and give instruction on what to do and what to, to do uh, during the rehabilitation process so, this is also another domain that saves a lot of time and effort in order to deal with the uh, important uh, uh, and uh, very specific and individual patient. So uh, another issue is the engaging uh, the patient enhancement, enhancement of the patient engagement. And uh, this is very important because uh, I mean, system should be able to attract uh, the patient, uh, if they are old, if they are young, if they, they cannot focus and so on. So this generative AI uh, is uh, uh, understand the situation and uh, react and generate different content, for instance, through making some image or animation or music and so on. So uh, try to, uh, re uh, I mean, bring back the patient into certain direction. Of course, the for education, for training, for uh, addressing uh, individual, the system can generate a different uh, programs on as an app. So uh, automatically, you can generate an app for individual patients rather than uh, I mean uh, communicating continuously with the doctors and experts. Uh, what I sh what should I do as one? So this app uh, would be assigned directly for that particular patient based on the problem that uh, that individual has. And uh, why we have to in fact, uh, uh, next, actually in brief, we can say that uh, we have to enhance the data analytics. So because we collect data, we can do analysis and we can do analytics and we can generate some sort of insight to understand the patient 360 degree. And uh, we can uh, always measure the progress and performance of each individual uh, patient. And of course, it's cost saving, time saving, and uh, uh, the system can be collaborative and uh, patient uh, doctors and uh, they can communicate easily and collaborate with each other. So uh, at this stage, we are going to uh, just uh, highlight uh, some of the tools that are available as the categories of the, uh, in fact, uh, uh, usage of uh, generative AI and chat GPT uh, for rehabilitation uh, in, currently in the world. So uh, as I mentioned to you for uh, in fact, brain-computer interface tools uh, somehow 
uh, collect information from the brain and try to uh, identify the stroke and the brain injury and Parkinson's disease and so on. And uh, about the bones and the uh, status and uh, joints of the skeleton. So we can, uh, there are so many tools now available. For the heart and cardiovascular uh, system, uh, of course, we have uh, other uh, uh, in fact, tools that they um, continuously monitor the blood pressure and the, the, even the uh, uh, signals and so on to make sure that the uh, individual patient is in the uh, right situation and prevent any heart failure and so on. And also, uh, in fact, all the uh, monitoring of the, uh, I mean, breathing system and so on in order to uh, control it even the robot can control the, how to breathe and how to generate signals for, for them to manage and strengthen their uh, breathing um, uh, muscles. So, uh, and also there are so many others uh, for physical trophies and for the all the elderly people who, and they may have dementia, and many other diseases, this application would be uh, uh, very uh, popular nowadays. And uh, of course, in the mental health, I was working for mental health application for a while for uh, uh, anxiety and depression. Uh, but uh, now there are so many advanced tools uh, available in the market to uh, control the stress and anxiety and so on. At the end of this phase, I'm going to go a little bit into the education system and how the AI and generative AI can be used uh, in uh, your uh, university. And uh, uh, this is very important to see that one. Uh, actually, uh, you can uh, design your curriculum or personalize curriculum for individual based on their background, based on their age based on the problems and so on. And they, you can collect data and do the uh, data-driven insight uh, processing in order to understand and their situation, their progress, their problem, their challenges and so on, and uh, reflect it uh, to the uh, real time in the content that we need to know and learn uh, uh, as uh, students also. Uh, this is a good monitoring method and uh, learning by doing. And of course, uh, you can create uh, content, uh, a very important uh, content based on the learning style and multiple intelligence of individual. These are very important because, for instance, in some cases, uh, students are uh, very good at uh, learning by seeing and uh, graph or animation. Uh, some other people, maybe they are stronger by listening to certain explanation and so on. So you can adjust it accordingly. And then based on this uh, adjustment, actually you can enhance the engagement of individual. So uh, uh, also uh, these tools would be a very uh, good tool for Future education. So uh, I have a few workshop and uh, training program for uh, education 4.0 and uh, 5.0, which are very uh, rely on intelligence system and personalized education system uh, to be adaptive to individual user in order to make them successful in a learning process. And uh, of course, uh, there are different uh, virtual reality or mental reality techniques uh, on the top of that one. And then uh, through certain interaction, uh, you can enhance the uh, learning process. Uh, yeah, so uh, the impact of using generative AI in rehabilitation is very important. And I wanted to highlight this one to you. Because when you use the uh, generative AI and artificial intelligence in your uh, syllabus and curriculum, uh, you need to modify some of the courses 
like uh, anatomy and uh, psychology and so on, and uh, many other rehabilitation techniques because tools are coming and uh, method of uh, uh, applying, um, in fact, uh, uh, I mean, certain technique in your domain for rehabilitation, uh, you can use uh, computer and generative AI to enhance it to uh, speed up the process. So, so the the way you are going to teach the content of the teaching uh, courses should be modified accordingly. And the other one, you also should add new courses to uh, your syllabus, like artificial intelligence, like data analytics, and so on. Because even in law. Even in art, nowadays, uh, all the people should learn how to use AI tools. For instance, the, three months ago, I conducted a training for, uh, in fact, uh, architecture department in one university in Canada, how to uh, change the uh, syllabus to meet the requir market requirement, market demand in future in three, four years time. because. When a student graduates after three years, four years, if they don't know any AI, at that time, most of the tools will be AI-based or AI-empowered. So if they don't have any idea, they get lost. So from now on, you have to consider how to introduce AI, AI techniques and tools to your student before they are graduated. So, for doing this one uh, and managing challenges and uh, getting uh, maximum benefits for uh, uh, your education, your for your uh, activities in rehabilitation, I suggest to have center of excellence. I uh, I propose it to uh, many organizations, and also I do uh, pro uh, propose it to you because if you have this one, you would be able to yourself to the new technology and uh, move forward accordingly. Otherwise, you lag behind and when students graduate, when you uh, set up your uh, system in your hospital and so on, uh, after a few years, you get lost. You don't know how to catch up with the new technologies and new tools that are available in the market. So uh, this is my last slide. Sorry for the Beginning, uh, I, I was thinking that the uh, guys are uh, in fact uh, appear on the screen. But anyway, uh, I hope this uh, brief uh, introduction to uh, rehabilitation and uh, application of AI and generative AI in this field is uh, useful for you. And uh, we can continue uh, working on this uh, domain uh, soon in future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, dear Professor Bexote. <clears throat> you have my voice? Yes, yes, yes. Thank you very much. And uh, I'd like to thank again from my dear colleagues. I don't know, is there any question? Let me see the chat box. Uh, if there is any question and any comment here, please tell us or everyone who wants to say something, please tell me to open his or her mic. And then, uh, uh, is there any question? No? Okay. Okay, it is open, I think. No, I can't see. No, no, my, uh, okay, it is open here. I can't see you there. Okay, can you see me? Okay, okay, would you please, uh, the Dr. Baxter, would you please uh, stop your sharing? Uh, yes. see the message of the participant here. Thank you very much. Uh, is there any question, my dear colleague? Okay, it shows that there's no question. Okay, two new messages. Let me see. No, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much uh, from you. Uh, here, uh, in the last part of this webinar, let me thank again from Dr. Bekzadeh and uh, ECOSF and all the colleagues of uh, us 
internationally and nationally. Uh, okay, someone, Mr. Shahyadi, generative AI can be used all over in the rehab continuum uh, from assessment to goal setting and uh, plan of care. Thanks to Dr. Uh, Bekzade. Thank you very much. The, um, there was uh, there were um, another comment about uh, let's say let me find that if is it possible uh, go back to find another comment I saw here uh, a, a comment that was about uh, the usage of uh, AI in uh, um, occupational therapy. A missing occupational therapy, a major discipline in the rehabilitation. Uh, okay, I didn't, uh, I didn't understand. Okay, if there were something about occupational therapy in your uh, lecture or not, uh, would you please tell us some about? If is it possible? Yeah, occupational health. If you mean occupational health, is also another domain. No, uh, occupational therapy. Let me say in Farsi, occupational therapy. I don't know what is said in Farsi, let's say. But it is a kind of rehabilitation part, I think. So uh, if I... Yes, I know, say, I, I, car yeah, darmoni in Farsi. It is said car darmoni. Oh, right. Yes. I believe because I know, I mean, uh, uh, Art therapy and uh, occupational <laughs> therapy. So there are so many domains, but of course, uh, there are uh, definitely, I mean, uh, uh, AI and generative AI is very capable of uh, generating services, value services uh, to different uh, domains. Why uh, I can say this one easily? Because actually these systems are capable of uh, accessing all the information mm -hmm. available in the uh, digital world. And also they can classify them, they can learn from them, and they can communicate uh, with humans in order to uh, enhance or enrich the, uh, I mean, the search for the data. So for any purpose, if you have a, I mean, uh, chat GPT uh, on your mobile, you can just uh, ask any question related to that one. You can get uh, a good uh, response easily. And uh, But if you want to go to uh, identify the professional, uh, for instance, uh, uh, men for step-by-step -step controlling the patient and so on, uh, of course, you can do it uh, on your own based on the yes. uh, knowledge and expertise that you have. So these are very possible, good. yes. I can very say good. yes, it's, Thank it's you. possible. It's uh, very powerful, extremely powerful. Yes, yes. I think we can may, uh, use uh, from AI in the shame in um, occupational therapy, they are working on the um, people that have some, uh, let's say, um, problem in their working, in the usage of their, let's say, parts of their body, we say cardharmony. It's a very good part, a very good, uh, let's say, uh, part of uh, rehabilitation uh, therapy in Iran, rehabilitation part. And then it could be used from AI in this regard. I think we, we can work more and develop this here. But uh, Professor Tayyibi, the president of EcoSF, uh, has some comments. Uh, we are, um, the, the place is yours, Professor Taibi. Uh, I'd like, you are like to know about some challenges available between AI and health. Of course, this is so general, but um, if you hear, um, Professor Taibi, we can uh, hear from you and then start a, a short discussion based on the time that we have here. Yes, I'm ready. Thank you very much. Oh, okay. Thank you, Dr. Begzad. Uh, I think everybody enjoyed your presentation. Uh, very vast information we received. Anybody, of course, received. Uh, you know, just uh, what is it? Come, it came to my mind. Uh, of course, when we, you know, we talk about any phenomenon, uh, we can consider the opportunity, the you know, advantages, 
as well as you know disadvantages so uh, regarding ai there have been some challenges some uh, controversial issues on this any relation we can find you know any challenge uh, of course we can consider between you know ai and especially habitation as you uh, talk about of course this is so general but for some specific uh, i mean here we can uh, discuss Sure. Did you uh, get my point? Yes, because, uh, like, yeah. um, uh, yes, yes, we can uh, specifically focus on one of them at least, then we can discuss. But anyway, uh, when we go deep into the specific domain, of course, I need more, uh, uh, I mean, subject matter expert knowledge to make sure that the application of uh, AI or generative AI is fit for that, that domain or not. But anyway, since I have a lot of experience in various domains, so I'm ready to and open to discuss uh, uh, any, any case that you have in your mind. Maybe, uh, Dr. Uh, Ahmadi, maybe would be the, you know, next uh, topic yes. Uh, yes. to, to yes. discuss. And again, invite Dr. Uh, Begzadi if, if he has enough time to, uh, you know, to consider and to talk about this. This is very important, I think, to the all participants. Yes, yes. Anyway, uh, it could be yeah. the next webinar of us or the next, uh, let's say, course right. of uh, uh, webinars or uh, lectures here, if Dr. Begzadeh um, accept or invitation in this regard. But we have two uh, other two um, other kinds of, uh, let's say, requirements in this regard. Uh, some of our, let's say, colleagues ask the usage of AI in pharmaceuticals. And uh, the other one said, okay, it is very important to have the usage of AI uh, in dentistry. And because uh, it, um, you, have, you see, as you know, the medical field and health field are very vast uh, and the usage of AI in any of these, uh, let's say, part could be very important for the health of the population and it could be mentioned and let's say developed and to be let's say uh, say some information some knowledge and science in this regard uh, developed and uh, broadcast here to make the foundation the, the to pave the uh, let's say way of us to develop uh, the usage of AI in health. If, is it possible? And we could have a more, let's say, collaboration in this regard and then have some more uh, lectures. Um, in, in near future, we are going to have uh, the aims, the um, artificial intelligence in medicine congress, the international uh, congress for medical, the usage of artificial intelligence in medicine in Iran, in Tehran, in near future or three or four months later from this time because we had this uh, congress international congress last year in uh, or Behesh in may in in Kish, and the second congress is going to be held in near future in tehran and it could be discussed these uh, let's say kinds of um, discussion could be discussed there but uh, we are ready to have uh, another webinar with the help of uh, EcoSF and uh, the other colleagues in this regard. Thank you. Yes, I'm, I would be very happy uh, to uh, participate in this type of discussion. And as I mentioned to you, uh, we can go for one or two or three projects. There are so many, even the Thank uh, you. Uh, dentistry. In fact, now they, they have a device. They put it uh, in your mouth and yeah. uh, collect uh, data or image in x-ray in I mean very accurate uh, uh, three-dimension uh, image and analyze it and identify what's wrong with your this. So uh, there are so many applications for um, in uh, this type of uh, uh, diseases and so on. But anyway, if you want to uh, have some sort of a strategic plan or roadmap for your university and uh, uh, people who are professionally working in this field, 
I, as I suggest that we need to uh, set up uh, some sort of uh, center of excellence in order to uh, move it based on a roadmap. Because mm -hmm. if we go for individual projects, of course, uh, we may, uh, in fact, waste a lot of time and resources and efforts. Well, of course, when we uh, have this experience, I was heading uh, research center, telecommunication research center in Iran. So we, we mobile device in, I mean, 25 years ago, and but the size was big, but at the same time, because the uh, foreign companies, they had technology to produce it, they reduced the size. So we had the knowledge, but we couldn't make it. So they could sell it in the market, we couldn't sell it. So although we had knowledge. So if we have a roadmap, we have to move forward and generate different knowledge and skills related to that one, particularly in AI, we can do it. We don't need very uh, complicated devices. We need brain, right? So we have a lot of brain in Iran, I believe. So I believe now if we focus on this one, then even, sorry about uh, saying this, but 25, six years, yeah, 27 years ago, I proposed a research center for AI in Iran, oh. but nobody, nobody listened to me even. <laughs> <laughs> very good, very good. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Maybe a still nobody listens to you. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, yeah, it was uh, at that time, uh, even until before, uh, generative AI come to the market, many people say, well, what do you mean AI and so on? So, but now people are asking, what is AI? What you can do with AI in this field and that field and so on? So right. that's why the <laughs> demand is very high now, but I believe strategically in Iran, we need to focus on this one and move forward rapidly. We have a lot of intelligent people. We have all the tools available and we cannot waste time. We have to move forward very fast because today, if there are hundreds, but well, at least 1000 AI tools in the market, every day, hundred tools come to the market, maybe two years later, finished. I mean, saturated and no need for anything else. So you have to buy everything. You cannot go for any development. So right. I believe right. the faster we do, Definitely, we get better results. Thank you very much. Professor Taibi, do you want yeah, to say uh, something? Dr. Begzadeh, you know, to, for your information, right now we have a good collaboration uh, with Smart University of Medical Sciences in Iran. And, you know, as we, uh, Ecoscience Foundation, uh, an intergovernmental organization and special agencies work, you know, focusing on science and technology promotion. So such events um, give a good chance to, you know, to us to circulate uh, and to share, you know, such uh, knowledge uh, exchange, uh, not only to Iran, uh, but uh, also to the, to the region, to the region including 10 member countries uh, of eco eco science fund eco economic cooperation organization so uh once again i would like to extend my thanks to you for your very interesting uh, presentation and to our colleagues to my friend dr ahmadi and uh, his very productive team as uh, you know, uh, any day and uh, any time, just I'm, um, uh, you know, uh, following uh, communication with, uh, you know, with uh, uh, Dr. Ahmad Isai, just I, I enjoy it. Just, uh, you know, good collaboration. It's for Gibbos. Right, yeah. It's for Gibbos. <laughs> it's for uh, right. <laughs> Okay, following. anyway, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much, uh, Professor Davy and Professor Begzadeh. I'd like to say again my warmest thanks to Professor Taibi for, uh, let's say, having this uh, fruitful webinar and it's a very good presentation and very good lecture. We get um, lots of uh, information in this regard about the usage of uh, AI in rehabilitation, like 
motor recovery, personalized treatment, sensor-based movement, and robot assistant therapy, and something else, and then motion analysis, usage of AR, VR, intrapetric issues, and then speech recognition, all the things that say, enhan enhancing patient engagement, and AI in rehabilitation education. These are the, let's say, some of the outline that have written from your very fruitful speech and uh, very fruitful lecture for us. Uh, as you know and you see in the chat box, there are some, let's say, requests about the um, future webinars about uh, the other aspects of usage of AI in health and medicine and the other things that if, uh, inshallah, we could uh, arrange and uh, we could have the you could have you have time we will arrange inshallah in near future uh, some kinds of this there, there is a good news that i want to tell you here i want to tell you here is that the you're frozen hello For the uh, establishment to us in this university, we have the, yes, it is now today comes to my, um, let's say, um, computer and the news of, this is the news of today. It is, it is said that the Research Center for Artificial Intelligence in Medicine is given to us to establish here. And it is the first, I think, in the country, the Research Center for Artificial Intelligence is held is given by the Ministry of Health to us uh, for establishing and having, uh, let's say here, the good project, the uh, research project and development of AI in, in many kinds of um, aspects of medicine, I think, and medical sciences. Considering AI usage is a new subject, please arrange webinars in the field of AI of medical education, especially basis course. Okay. Dear Dr. Shardon, Shardon uh, Saberi, uh, for your more information, we had uh, now this is the seventh or the eighth uh, webinar. We have three or four webinars in the usage of AI in medical education, and is going one of them. The other one is going to be in the um, last webinar. Uh, I think we had with Dr. Hasnain from Mal Malaysia. Uh, about the usage of AI in medical education. And next webinar, inshallah, is going to be rendered uh, with the usage of AI or the other kinds in medical education, especially. Again, I'd like to say thank you, Dr. Begzadeh. It, uh, thank You're you. welcome. It's my honor to hear and see your very fruitful um, lecture. Again, to Professor um, Tayebi for uh, your very very informative and very fruitful comments here and your colleagues in ECOSF and I'd like to take my uh, to say thank you and my gratitude to my dear colleagues uh, Mrs. Uh, Arawani, Mrs. Keshawars and Mrs. Ruzbahani and Mrs. Um, uh, Akrami that helped us as Professor Tayyibi mentioned here and uh, please uh, forgive us uh, for any inconvenience, any arrangement uh, for rendering this webinar. And this is the last um, sentence of us, uh, me, let's say. And thank you again. If there is any comment, please. It's operation. And Dr. Ahmadi, don't forget just to <laughs> mention uh, Khalid, uh, engineer Khalid Reza and Bilal and my colleague okay, here yes. at the office, yes, yes. Uh, you know, who support <laughs> Technically, yes, and, yes. You know, I, 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 <laughs> in the starting point, I, I right. said my thanks to an engineer, Mrs. Master Engineer, right, right. and yeah. your colleague in the starting. Okay. And in the last, yes, I say right. my very You're warm right. gratitude and thanks to my dear colleagues and your colleagues in ECOSF because without the uh, help of them, without the support of them, um, exactly. And, uh, we cannot have this webinar here, and then uh, I'd like uh, I again say my thanks.
to you and your dear colleagues, Khalil, engineer Khalil Riza and the other colleagues. I don't know the name of them. He says, thank you. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. I'm uh, very keen to uh, continue this collaboration soon and uh, hopefully we can work together in future. Thank you very much. Inshallah. Thank you very much and then have a good time and bye-bye. See you, Bye. inshallah, in the future. Thank you. All right.